I just want to throw this out there quickly. If you happen to be watching a video and you have a question, don't hesitate to throw that question into the comments section of that particular video. I try and make sure I look at all of the comments and respond as quickly as I can. Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the brushless motor no load current. We're going to break this video down into three separate sections. We're first going to talk about exactly what is the no load current and how do even motor manufacturers put that on a spec sheet for us. We're also going to talk about the specific efficiency and how it's actually affected by the no load current. And we're going to end off with talking with how do we actually measure the no load current if we don't have that on a spec sheet that we can find. So let's get started. The no load current is also known as the no load constant. Now on brushless motors, there are three separate constants that we will typically see on a data sheet. The first being KV. There are a couple videos already explaining exactly what that is. That is the most common one. Then the next one is the IO current. So that is the no load current. And then the third one is RM. This is the internal resistance to the motor. Now we're talking about the no load current, IO. It's also represented as I not. You know, just the simple I with an O at the very end. That's how you will typically see it on a data sheet. Now the no load current is the current of the motor running or operating at a very constant speed with a specific voltage applied. The point taken from there is the specific voltage. Now motor manufacturers have typically accepted the 10 volt mark to be their test voltage. Keep in mind that motor manufacturers don't know the exact voltage that you will apply to your motor. One person may take that motor and operate it at 20 volts while someone else may take it and operate it at 14 volts. So if they have different voltages, you're not getting the precise IO value for your specific application. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about the, the actual measuring of the IO value. Now when we look at the no load current and we compare it to efficiency, it's pretty obvious that if we don't have a load, it seems like something is being wasted. And that's exactly true. So if we're consuming power and we're not actually operating or driving anything mechanically, that would suggest to us that this is complete waste. And that's very true. So the no load current of a brushless motor is exactly that, associated with complete waste energy. Now we know that it is waste energy because we can compare it with Newton's first law. So Newton's first law says that an object in motion will tend to stay in motion. If we go and take our brushless motor, accelerate it up to the voltage, you know, that we're driving this motor at, and then keep it there at constant speed, we should expect to see that there's no power consumed. That object, once it's in motion, it should stay in motion. But you know, reality sets in and this is not the case. Now there are three primary reasons why we do not see a value of zero for your no load current. The power being consumed is partially due to hysteresis, eddy currents on the iron core, as well as mechanically the bearings associated with our brushless motor. So all three of these uh, combined to serve the whole entire value that is provided to us as the I not value, the no load current. This represents the power that is required in order for us to maintain that constant speed of operation. Now let's quickly talk about how we can actually measure our no load current if we wish to do so. Now most manufacturers will provide the no load current of their motor so that we're able to get this. And the reason why it's important for us to know it is because we can put it into certain calculators in order for it to provide us with some information. Now, if we want to go ahead and measure it, there are a few tools that we will need. Typically, what you'll want is a full setup that will operate the brushless motors. So what I'm referring to here is that you will need a radio, of course, the motor that you wish to operate, as well as an ESC in order to handle the voltage that you're going to be sending the motor, and of course, the battery itself. Now, when we talk about the battery that we're going to use, we did explain in an previous bit of the video that motor manufacturers are typically using that 10 volt uh, value in order to get this no load current. However, in our case, because we're able to use the exact same voltage that we plan to run, we should may as well just do this and go ahead and use it. So if you plan to run 14 volts, then go ahead and place a 14 volt battery on that motor and run it from there. 
If you'd prefer to stick with what motor manufacturers are doing, then I would suggest using a 3-cell LiPo. Either way, you're going to get a value that you can use and it's going to be consistent with either the motor manufacturer's values or consistent with the voltage that you plan to run in that exact application. Keep in mind, if you go that route that I mentioned where you're picking the battery, you are specifically picking it for those conditions. That's again why the motor manufacturers pick that 10 volt mark. It's good for everything. It's a good baseline. The last bit of equipment that you'll need, and this is only if you plan to do so. If your ESC does not have the data logging capability, what you'll want to do is go ahead and use a 10 amp ammeter. Now most multimeters out there will provide enough range in order to actually hit the 10 amp mark. Most motors are going to fall between 0 and 10 amps when you go ahead and measure this. So that's why the 10 amp multimeter is necessary, just so you make sure that you don't blow up your own ammeter. Out of the two methods that you can perform this measuring of the IO value, I would suggest going the ammeter route because some of the data logging that takes place is not very accurate at that very small current amount. However, if you trust your data on your ESC and it's capable of logging it, go ahead and use that value. As for most of my results, I'm using an ammeter and I'm hooking it up in line with the system. So to do that, you'll first want to go and connect everything. You'll also want to make sure that your brushless motor does not have any sort of mechanical component attached to the shaft. You want it to be just the motor itself. You don't want to have anything connected to it. You're going to spin it and you're supposed to spin it with zero load. The next thing to do is go ahead and plug the speed control into the brushless motor. Then plug the speed control into your radio RX. The next thing that you'll want to do is go ahead and plug your battery in. Once your battery is plugged in, you'll want to make sure that you have radio connection and the ESC is completely armed. And then once you have that complete, what I would recommend is unplugging one of the battery terminals to the ESC and then inserting the ammeter into that location. When you have the ammeter inserted into the location of the battery pack, one lead, you'll end up taking one of the positive leads from the ammeter, placing it into the battery pack, and then the second lead from the ammeter you'll run into the ESC. That will put that ammeter in series with the ESC as well as the battery. Once you have that set up, you'll want to make sure that you turn your ammeter on to the current measuring capability setting, and then you'll want to also confirm that you have the lead in the correct location. Once you have everything plugged in and set up, now you want to go and make sure that you bring all of this to a nice safe area to run up the motor. Keep in mind that the motor will move because it is under acceleration as you get it up to speed. And then once you have it up to speed, take your measurement. I typically like to use a photo. I take a photo of the, the actual screen this way. I, I have it logged, I don't need to write anything down. It's simple as phone, you know, you take your phone, click a picture, that's it. You have your value and that's all there is to it. That's how you're able to get a, an IO value just for your brushless motor. Now, like I already mentioned, in order to actually compare these IO values with one another, we will want to see the lowest IO value possible. And of course, IO values will be higher on motors that have higher KVs. When motors have lower KVs, you should expect a lower IO value. That's the kind of relationship that you will see here. And overall, if you have two brushless motors and they are of equal internal resistance, you will want the brushless motor that has the least amount of no load current. That would suggest that that motor is operating more efficiently. So if you like these videos and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.